Welcome to Bitter Reality Brewing. Today, we're going to be asking that question. Does pH matter? Yeah, I know a lot of you are going, oh, it does. Okay, stop, calm down. But how much does it matter? And I know pH matters for different reasons, but how much does the pH decide on what your original gravity is gonna be? So we're gonna do a very simple test. We're gonna keep everything very basic and just focus on original gravity based on pH. Don't forget, like, subscribe. Thank you for all the sharing. If you haven't subscribed, please, you know, hit, hit the color red. Just click on it, it'll go gray and you won't ever see it again. It'll be a good thing. Essentially, what we're going to do is we're gonna to try to keep everything as simple and as basic as possible so that we can keep a nice standard test. My mash temperature is gonna be 152 Fahrenheit. I'll have to look that up on Celsius and maybe put it up on the screen there for you. We're gonna just do a Simple pot on a stove. We're gonna to try to mash in maybe around 154, 155. I'm gonna to have to figure that one out and I'll explain how we're gonna do that. We're gonna add one pound of grain to a half a gallon of tap water, just tap water. I'll get a pH reading and we'll have what we call a control group. Our control group will be our first one because I wanna keep everything extremely simple. And just like I said, it's extremely simple. Take a pH reading of our tap water, then we'll take, crush a half pound of grains, we'll dump it in to the tap water, which we're gonna raise it up to a certain temperature, which will probably be about 156, I figure, and that should bring us down to around 152. We can adjust for it. The reason this is gonna be our control group is that about 15 minutes, I figure, is good enough. We're gonna take another pH reading, and we're gonna find out what our pH of our wort is at that point. So let's say it comes out at six. So we say, okay, well, we need to adjust from the difference of our original pH to get it down to where when we add our grains the second time, we'll be at 5.6. Do it again for 5.4 and again for 5.2. So a good example is if it went down from, let's say it was eight. I know, very alkaline, but we'll say eight. And we tested it and it came out at 6.4. Then that means we're gonna to need to add enough lactic acid to bring it down a full point if we're looking for 5.4. I think you follow what I'm trying to say there. So that's what we're doing. We're just going to basically have a control group so we can take a look, see what type of acidity we get naturally out of the grains and what we're gonna to need to add for the three test groups. The three test groups will be 5.6, which I said one group, three test areas, 5.6, 5.4, and 5.2. Then we'll take all of those, we're going to let them sit in mash for exactly one hour, a half a gallon of water, one pound of Pilsner malt, nothing special. At the end of that hour, I'm simply going to strain the grains, take the wort, use a colander, I figure I don't even need to brew in a bag, I just, it'll be all good. Basically, we'll take that wort, we'll get an original gravity for the 5.6, the 5.4, the 5.2, maybe even for the higher one, just to see where it was, and see how much it impacted our actual sugars, fermentable and non-fermentable, of course, because the original gravity is gonna read it all as one, and see exactly how much of a difference we have based on those pHs. I know everybody says 5.4 or 5.2 is the best. 5.2 I hear a little bit more, but what kind of impact does it directly have on our original gravity when we're done? Don't know, we'll find out. I put a half a gallon of just tap water, nothing special. I just hit the heat, so the water is not even that hot yet. Actually, it's not hot at all. I'm gonna get a pH reading here real quick. Yeah, it's 71.6, so yeah, it's not hot. Okay, we're at 77.7, 78. 77 Fahrenheit, uh, if I remember right, is the ideal temperature for getting a pH reading anyway, so I figure I just stop so it doesn't get any hotter. Okay, it's bouncing around the same place. Okay, 7.76 seems to be where it's decided to stop and hang out since it was going up and down a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna heat this up. I'm gonna get up to about 156. We're gonna drop in a pound of grain. The grain's already been milled. It's been milled at 0 0.0375 an inch. We'll dump that in there. I'm not even gonna use a grain bag, but we'll dump it when we dump the wort out. We're trying for 152 mash temp. 
and we're just going to let it sit and it can free fall on its own. I've done some tests. It takes quite a while to get down even a few degrees after, you know, we cover it and just put it off to the side. So we'll be fine. The whole goal here is to literally see what the pH impact is. And this is our test bed, which means that all we're looking for here is if I'm doing 7.76 and I get six, what type of lactic acid adjustment do I need to do to bring it down? So when we add the green, we'll have our 5.6, our 5.4 and our 5.2 so that we can actually compare them. So we'll let this heat up. And once it hits temp, I'll pitch the, mash the grains in, pitch the grains, whatever you want to call it. There we go. I am sitting right at 156. Let's go ahead and mash in. A nice little spoon, mini mash spoon. Move it over here, I don't want to touch the heat. Might be a test, but it still smells good. At about 148, I want to be at 152, and then we'll cover it and let it ride. Okay, we're at 150. There we go. 151 and peeking up there. Okay, 152. We're going to go ahead, cover it, let it sit for 15 minutes, and I'll take a pH test and we'll let it finish out and we'll do another pH test so we know where to adjust our water to ensure that we get a 5.6, a 5.4, and a 5.2. Time to take another pH reading. Getting a 5.82, which means we would need to just adjust the pH down 0 0.2, 0 0.4, and 0.6 to get to where we wanna be for our other tests. And I'll write that out so I know what I'm doing. Okay, so we started at 7.76, 15 minutes in at 152, put us at 5.82. That means that if we want to get to 5.6, 5.4, and 5.2, assuming everything else is the same, we need to be at 7.54, 7.34, 7.14. So I'm going to try to get the tap water adjusted with lactic acid to those pHs before we heat it up and mash in. Okay, remember this is our test one, so it really didn't matter. We just started at our tap water, which happened to be 7.76, and we went down to 5.82. So it would tell us how much we had to do an adjustment using lactic acid to get our other ones so that when they actually were mashed in, they should be at 7.54 to get to 5.6, 7.34 to get to 5.4, and 7.14 to get to 5.2. And this one is at 5 or 7.14, and this one is at 7. 3, 4, and what a pain in the butt it is to get that in exactly one gallon. It is you basically have to overdo it, get it to where you want it, and then remeasure your one gallon. It's the only way I can find to do it. I got so close so many times. <clears throat> so I'm just going to check this one here. I'm going to dump it into colander. I don't have enough pots. I'm going to need this pot. <laughs> there we go. Like we said, we're not sparging, so just, there's the liquid. Okay, I'm gonna get some of that ready to measure and cool it down a little bit and clean this mess up so I can use that pot. Okay, I officially feel like I've lost my mind. <clears throat> that's 7.54, that's 7.34, and that's 7.14. Our expectation is 5.60, 5.40, 5.20, with one pound of Pilsner malt. So we'll have to see. Hopefully we'll nail it. That was a real pain in the butt to do. We're going to heat them all up to about 156, just like we did the other one. Actually, 158 because we realized it dropped two extra. Yeah, we'll go to 158 and then mash in. That should put us pretty close to about 150, 152, and we can adjust a little if we need to. 158. Taking it off the heat. Let it mash in. A little mini mash paddle. Not too worried about dough balls with this since uh, it's pretty easy and pretty obvious to see them if we get them. We are sitting at 152. We will cover that one. We'll get the other ones ready. I'm going to do this. Slide it back there. Let this one heat up. Nope. Let this one heat up. And we will keep them in order. High pH, medium, low. Okay, this one's going to heat up now and I'll get the grains ready. Here we go, 152. Nice. Okay, 
give that a few more minutes and I'll take a pH reading and then we'll do a pH reading and another pH reading and see where we ended up. Hopefully we're very close to where we need to be, if not right on. Dead on, eh? Okay. For some reason the pH didn't get adjusted that much and I don't know why, even though the water was. So we're at 5.59 for this one. I had to add a little bit of lactic acid and I'm gonna have to add a little bit to each one of them. Okay, that just became our 5.2 test. <laughs> it's 5.19, so we're gonna let that be our 5.2 and hope that we don't overshoot on that one. There, 5.20, perfect. Awesome, 5.40 to 5.41, it kept bouncing. I hit hold. Okay, we'll let you sit for another 45 minutes and that was almost over 20, but it is what it is. I started a little early and finished a little late. Not a perfect test, but I'll take it. An hour plus the 20, so we're talking an hour 20. A little longer than I want it, but that's okay. They've been sitting at the right pH is the key. So now it's just a matter of basically taking them, putting the ward in here, cooling it down, taking a gravity, and doing a comparison. Like I said, I would share. This is Southern Tier Unearthly Triple Dry Hopped. Double IPA, 9.5%. With the information I'm getting ready to tell you, you might want to pull one out and pour it if you have anything like it. So what you don't know is this was the second test I did. And we did have some pH issues on the original test, but they were so just jacked, I had to redo the whole thing. And I verified the pH meter, I double checked everything, then I did the tests. And wow, we learned a lot. If you've watched this far, huge kudos, thank you. It's not an exciting video by any means, but it's very, very informative. Definitely hit the subscribe at this point. Diminished returns. I don't even know why I didn't think about that. If you're at this and you add something that brings the, some acidity with it, whatever level of acidity it is, I can't assume it's gonna drop the same no matter what pH we start at. And in my mind, that's how I was thinking. It doesn't work like that. It just doesn't. It's a diminished returns. And there were a few other little aspects in there that I just wasn't quite thinking about. And I tried to keep it as simple as possible and I oversimplified things and lesson learned. Hopefully everybody out there, if anybody was thinking the same way, they're like, oh wow, yeah, he's right. That's not gonna work. I didn't think about that. If you're bringing a percentage of acid at a certain level to the table, it's only, only going to adjust anything over it down and anything under or close to it, it's barely going to adjust. So that's something that really I didn't take into account. So here's the information. Does pH matter to the original gravity or the final original gravity numbers? I hate to tell you this, but it does and it doesn't. And I know that sounds bad, but I'll give you the facts. Okay, and I would like to say this test was inconclusive, but I'm gonna tell you 75% of that is because I didn't get the numbers I expected. 25% says I'd like to test it again, just because I was expecting completely different numbers. Maybe going to a five gallon full batch, I don't know. I really didn't wanna go crazy and do an entire batch and do three at different pHs, but you know, there is that possibility. I tried to keep that simple so there was less chance of error. As you will see in the video, or did see in the video, our 5.6, 5, 5.4, 5, 5, 5.2, when we finally had to get them to those levels, we had to add lactic acid and I had to shift them around a little. They didn't start off much different anyways, so it's not really a contributing factor. It is, but not by much. So here we go. The original test batch was at 7.76 pH, and that was my water, tap water, out of the faucet for all of them, 7.76 pH. We did 15 minutes, no adjustment to that water, and we were at 5.82 pH. The original gravity adjusted by temperature was five, or sorry, was 1.054. So pretty fair original gravity, and that was actually what I estimated at a 75% efficiency just for throwing some grains in a thing of water. So that's pretty good. Now, then we had our little issues and we had to adjust for them. And I tried to think that 7.54, 7.34, and 7.14 would all go down 
the same way and it didn't. So we'll just jump down here. The one that was at 5.6 pH, our final gravity adjusted by temperature because our actual gravity was 1.058, adjusted for temperature is 1.060. So it was 1.6, 1.060. That's six points over a 75% efficiency. I didn't look to see what that would be as far as an efficiency, it didn't really matter. That wasn't the point of this test. At 5.4 pH, we were at 1.060 again, and that's temperature adjusted. So we had no original gravity difference between 5.6 and 5.4. The part that threw me for a loop, and this is where I would like to test it again, because I didn't expect this, was at 5.2, it's actually at 1.059, I lost a point of gravity. I'm gonna kind of say it was a fluke, but I double checked, triple checked, I did everything the same, I kept the temperatures. Yeah, we literally had no major difference in gravity. We had no difference in gravity at 5.6 and 5.4 and only one point difference and it actually went down instead of up at 5.2. I'm going to say that was a little bit of a fluke and maybe it would have been 1.060 if I did another test, but I don't know. We'll have to test again. So what I learned from this, other than of course the diminished returns and lesson learned, is that adjusting your gravity in a range of 5.2 to 5.6 does matter. It brought our original gravity up, which was good. I mean, we gained five to six points based on how you look at it. So adjusting your gravity to make sure that you're in that 5.2 to 5.6 range is huge. The 5.6 to 5.2, there really wasn't a big difference and what was there was one point. Now, keep in mind that I'm not saying that final, or pH doesn't matter. pH does matter, but pH matters for a lot of different things. There are enzymes, there are supposedly flavors and different types of things that are released that are beneficial or tannins and things like that. So your pH does matter. I'm still going to be shooting for 5.4 to 5.2 when I do my brews, but 5.2 to 5.6, there was no major difference. There was a major difference from 5.82 down to the respective 5.2 to 5.6 that most people shoot for. So just something to be aware of. I wish I had more information for you on that. I wish I did the test three times, but that's what I have so far. And maybe I'll do another test like this again down the road and we'll see how it goes. Definitely challenge anybody out there. Feel free to do a similar test and see what you get. I'm definitely open. Feel free to leave me some comments. Let me know what you're thinking. Let me know how annoying this video really was. I know it was very geeky, very nerdy, all about the numbers and not exciting at all. But you know, I was curious. People talk about it, but I haven't seen anything out there to prove it. And I had to test it. So thank you again for joining us here at Bitter Reality Brewing. Don't forget like, subscribe. Thank you again for all the sharing, it's huge. Hopefully you're drinking a great beer. I had my double blonde earlier and that was really good, but had to step it up a little bit. Thank you again.